Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of First We Play. And uh, today's episode, I want to go over the green cards, uh, specifically the Dr. Uriel, Uri, whatever you want to call it, and Dr. Co Coaching. Uh, I know this car, or this leader specifically, is getting a lot of attention because uh, you put a certain amount of cards under, I think, the fuel spell, I mean, the fuel extra card you automatically win the game so I haven't seen any of these cards uh, I took a I usually don't see the cards until they come out because I want to have the actual physical card in my hand to read it so this is something new for me let's see how I do hopefully you guys like it alright so let's get started so this is the leader so when you play this card in your, in your leader area, choose up to one of the labs from your deck and practice the reader. So it's already like like the red Broly or like cooler that you just automatically activate the, the extra card. When this card attacks your leader card, look up the top 7 cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to one Frenzier Warrior or Karma on them, add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So I guess that's a new type. Friend, friend seed warrior. Okay, so you look up the seven and add to your hand. So it's not that bad. You're gonna always have. So this is the way you're gonna be searching for things. Mm, when you four, when you have four or more energy, or your life is a three or less, you may choose up to two of your energy, switch them to act them or flip this card over. So this is really specific. You have to be either at three life or for energy so you're gonna kind of want to survive because yeah I mean this car I don't know I mean the lab seems pretty good but this right here I know you're gonna have survival like a lot of at the aggro decks right now so you see on the awakened side when this car attacks draw one car like the main once per turn choose one card in your hand and place it on the drop area choose up to one keyword skill on one of your opponent's battle cards in the game for the duration of turn so there's like 12 the same thing uh the other act main if, if the lab is in the battle area or if that but the car has 17 or more cards under it you win the game also it's not the lab it's this is this like the main? You're gonna have to have 17 cards under that, the extra card, and you win the game. So let's see. Keep winning. No, this is the same thing, but it's a stamp version. Yeah. So this is Goku. Mm, it's nothing to do with them. Um, You choose the green extra card, two less, and place it in the trap pressure. So right there, you play this card, draw one card. Okay. But you have to have a red green multi color to reduce it by two, so it'll be a one drop. You choose a red or green. So you place it in the drop ring. Why would you want to place it in the drop ring? We'll see. It just draws it's a token. No, you combo with a draw card. Piccolo is a blocker. You choose a clone token. And more from the gate. Play this card from the from your hand. So you're gonna be able to put tokens on your opponent's area. Hmm, interesting. So this one goes with it, uh, as the flag, on 3, when you play this card, choose 1, your opponent chooses 2 cards from their hand and place them under your Dr. Euro's lab, hmm, heroes, I think it's your heroes, I don't know, your opponent chooses 2 cards from their hand and sends them to the board, so you choose 1, 
So either way, you're gonna get rid of two coins. And it's a four drop. So this one's this one's probably gonna have to be in the deck. Yeah, I think there's a Gohan that you search for. Okay, go Let's see. Let's keep reading. When you place this card, draw one card for the entire game. You, if the turn player will use the skill of a battle card next to because it's okay. So this is like the zero burden for send a button and sense of being. Okay, so the Jancha, Oolong, just a common. I wonder how many people want this one stamped. <laughs> Does this one do anything for that leader? Mm, see so when this card play in the bad area, you replace this card from your hand. So if it's placed in the drop area and you don't have this card, you play it. You send this card from your hand from the drop area to your warp. Choose one card from your hand and place it in the drop area. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of 3 or less and KO. Nah, no, no, this is too much work for what he does. Um, so nothing for the leader. So there's the Andrew 21 stuff. Uh, I'll probably go over it in another video. Right now I just want to get the... We'll see the other cards. So this is... This battle card. So when you play this card, you draw one, choose this card and one green card in your in your hand and place them in the owner's drop area. When your opponent's card attacks, negate the attack. So you play this, you draw one. You have to have a green open. So probably turn two. This one is so only one one of these can be played in the battle area and reduce the en energy cost of all frenzied warriors causing your hand by one. So you can only have one of these. It's kind of like the slug one, but this one doesn't have a barrier, so you'll be able to get rid of this. So when you play this card, look at the top seven of the top of your deck. Choose up to one frenzied warrior among them. Add to your hand, shuffle it, then choose up to one of those warriors in your hand with any cost of two or less and play. So you could basically search the top seven, get one of them, and play the same thing. And play it, because it could be any of them, as long as there are two or less, you play it. So this is a frenzied warrior. When you play this card, play the top card your deck under. Or slap in your battery, then draw one card. So you could play this for free. Oh, actually, no, no, never mind. It reduces the energy cost, but not the specified cost. So even this, you have to pay one energy to play it. If this were to say and uh, specific cost, this would be free. Totally free. Okay, next one. So this is your super combo. So it to be four or less to draw a card. Well, at least it doesn't put cards on the bottom of your of the lab. That would be really, really good. So this is another one. It's a blocker. When this card activates blocker, place it on the top of your deck. On place the top card of your deck under the lab in your battle area. And this card can be KO'd in battle by battle cards with an original power of. 15 or less for the duration of the game. So, so little things like Kaba or something like that, they cannot, they cannot kill with this card. They can just keep blocking. The only thing that will kill this will be the leader or something stronger than that. So this is good against aggro and it will be at one cost with the other one on the field. You can also play it for free when you search for, you search for it. So this is another one here. So this one is Bioman Living Weapon. 
when you play this card, look at the top seven. Choose one, Dr. Uro, Uriel, whatever you want to call it, or Dr. Coaching. Her among them, add to your hand and shuffle your deck. So, this is another searcher. So, the leader's a searcher, the other one's a searcher, this one's a searcher. So, this is. Oh, this is the one that does the clone tokens in your opponent's area. Okay. I guess I literally want to do that. Uh, Rise of Dr. Uru. When you activate this card, you you can activate you can activate this card for the duration of the turn. Your leader card is a Dr. Uru card. Look at the top five cards on the top of your deck. Choose up to one. Dr. Uriel or Dr. Coaching among them add to your hand, then shuffle your deck. If you add a card to your hand, choose up to one of your green energy and switch it to activate. Hmm. I mean, it's another searcher and it's basically free because you add something, you switch back an energy. But if the opponent plays the other, the other thing, the silver bullet. <laughs> you won't be able to unless you work pipe cards. Okay, this one's a revival. So it's a desire card. Your real card green, is green. Choose up to one Dr. Uro card in your drop area with an energy cost of four less and play. So, I mean, it's a three drop. Unless you're playing Chile and Lemo, it won't be free. Because your leader has to be green. And four less and play. I mean, it's okay. Let's see next. So this is a counterplay. Your leader has to be green. And your life has at four or less. If the battle card being played has an energy cost of three or less, it is placed in the owner's drop area instead of being played. So it's another one of those counterplay things. But you have to be four or less. You have to be four or less. And if you're four or less, you can activate it by taking the life. So kind of like sparkling. Okay, so that's the Dr. Uriel stuff. Mm, I don't know. I mean, the deck seems okay, but uh, I didn't see any other stuff. I mean, you see, there's more stuff in the back. So far, the deck is looking okay. Hmm. So there's the multicolor stuff. Maybe there's something at the bottom of this. So there's another radis. Hmm. Goku. Here's Vegeta Hit They ride a car There is The monkey Let's see Let's see if we can find more cars for that thing So this one also works with the, the clone tokens So there's gonna be a, something to look at later on. Let's see you. Protector. I think this for the other Android 21 stuff. These are all dual colors. This one's pretty good. Although the word is kind of weird. Like the 30k and 35k. And it's between those, so you could play the third. Technically, you play the 30k. I don't know. I know what they were thinking when they were the, that, like that. Oh, so this is the dual color. So you could play blue with it. So you could play Sansu Beans. You could play, play Wiz. I mean, you know, that's why they did all those silver bullets. So you could, you don't, you don't abuse those things anymore. 
So there's a blocker, elementary exhaust, arrival, blue green. Place cards in your hand in the drop area to match all colors specified. Okay, yeah, revive. Oh, revive, not, not arrival. Revive. When this card is KO, play this card and negate this skill for the duration of the turn. So you, you block, he dies, you do revive. You put a blue green or a dual color, play it again. When you play this card, choose up to two battle cards in the drop area, in your opponent's drop area, and place those cards under this card or at your lap in your battle area. So this is how you get rid of stuff from your opponent's drop area. This would be this would have been good against Chandran. But I mean I don't think people are gonna be playing Chandran that often right now. Because of the Rattles. So I revive sent the new mechanic. Then it's a blocker too. And every time you play you choose two of them. So that's four cards already. Let's say you play it one turn on turn two you play it. So that's two cards under it. You get KO, you do revive, you put two more. And then with the other ones you keep putting more. I think you could get to 17 pretty fast. I don't think it's gonna be that hard. So this is another one. Up oh, there's another blocker. Energy exhaust. Another revive. Choose one card in your hand and place it under, yeah, under the lap in your battle area. When you play this card, draw one card. And this is scientist. So you cannot play it for free. So you have to. Mm, I don't know. It's a two drop, and you have to play a blue and a green. While you draw a card, and it's a blocker. Hmm. I mean, you could just do, keep doing revive over and over. So you play this turn two. You draw a card. You put something under the, under the lab. It gets KO. You revive it. But I don't know if you if you revive it. Does it does the auto go off again? Because it doesn't say when you play this card. It just says auto. So when does this trigger? Oh, it says when you play this card, draw one card. Okay, it says right there. So auto, you have to put something. And then when you play this card, draw one card. Okay. So yeah, so that's two cards. And then next turn you summon the other one. That's four cards. And then what is going to be five. Oh, but you can only do one revive per turn. Because when this card is KO, play this card and get this skill for the duration of the turn. So does it mean the skill of this card or revive? Hmm. I think it means revive. So I don't think. So I think you, you choose this one to revive, you cannot revive this one. But I will just block. And then revive this one. So you will have one blocker, two blocker, three blockers. So it's not that bad. And these are the the special. I mean the feature rares. We call it noble villain rare. You see, there's just one for the doctor. I see one already, but let me see the other ones. Okay, so this is the one for the deck. Villainous. When you play another villainous battle card or activate villainous extra card skill, your opponent chooses one card in their hand and places it in the drop rate. Then negate this skill for the duration of the turn. When you play this card, choose up to one fancied warrior card in your drop area. Add to your hand. Uh, then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in okay. So when you play this, you choose a warrior in the drop, 
at your hand, then you choose something your opponent has and KO it. So that's really not, it's not the bad. It's a 4 drop though. So when you play another villainous or activate an extra card with villainous, so your opponent has to place in the draw, one card in the draw. So it's kind of like a hand control. So you could kind of mix it with hand control and this. Let's see what, what we could come up with when the set comes out. Because it is green, so you could probably play something like hand destruction or something. And then this. Then activate two green. Choose one Dr. Crook. Approaching card in your battle area and KO it. Play this card from your hand. So you could KO the little two drop. Or this one too. The revive one. Oh no, this is Dr. Oh, oh no, this is Dr. Coaching. Yeah. So you could KO that to play this. Hmm. Okay. So this is. These are the heroic strikes. Choose up to one of your little cards against 10k. Then choose one up up to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of two or less and KO. Hmm. It's okay. So this is the villainous one. This card gains villainous in all areas. Your opponent has a skillless battle card in the in play. If they have one, uh, choose any number of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of four or less. For which the total cost adds up to 4 or less and send them to the owner's room. So choose any number of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of 4 or less for which the total cost adds up to 4 or less. So this could KO tokens. Because it has to add up to 4 or less. And send them to the web. So this gives you tokens. So you play this. Then you go. Where's that card at? Oh, but you have to have this on the field. So you, yeah, so you play a villainous card. Yeah, so you have to have this on the field and you play the other card. Then they, they warp something. I mean, they drop something. Okay. I mean, the, the deck's looking okay. Uh. I like the the black one better actually. Let me see if I can find it. This one, I like this one better, Dr. Lynchy. Because the leader the leader is really good. I mean I'm pretty sure this card is gonna be really good. But I think he's gonna lose to to the other doctor. Cause this one is kinda like a nimbus. So once your opponent attacks, they cannot attack anymore with cards that are 7 or less. With battle cards or tokens. They can attack with your leader. So they, if they attack with, with the battle card, then that's it. And they can attack with the leader, and, and that's basically it. It's like anti-aggro. So all the time, your opponent can only attack with two things. One battle card and, your, and their leader. So that's all you have to worry about. And then this card is really good. Uh, it seems that it's, it's kind of hard to take out because it's a fire trap. It doesn't have a rival. It doesn't have anything evolved. But this little one right here brings it out. So this one, you you have to have that black a black machine mutant. Uh, you choose three black battle cards. Uh, between three and seven, you put them in the on the bottom of your deck in any order. You play this card from your hand so then then at four you basically um, you evolve it you evolve into this one so that's how you take this one out and then this one becomes an eight drop so you get the dual attack so it's, because this one the leader is when anybody attacks like even you so even when you attack you can only attack with a battle card and a leader but this one cannot attack and the awakened side, you can attack black battle cards. So, I mean, the, it doesn't really affect you because you won't be, you will not be attacking that much. But it does affect your opponent, 
And then this card right here is really good. And then this one right here is your little blockers. So you guys, you want to block like a crit, like a, a Kaba or something, or a trunk, a one drop trunks. And this one, when this card is KO, you choose a Ghost Warrior. Go from your hand and you play it. Okay, all those Ghost Warriors are pretty good. Some of them are better, like the Turtles is the best one in my opinion. So this one the blocker. Um, so yeah, so you, this one you, you, you're milling yourself because you always have to have three, three black cards and they have to be between three and seven. But you're sending them back with the Ghost Warriors and all that stuff. But with this one you send, you send, you send three of them back to the, to the deck. And then now between three and seven, and that to be battle cards. So no extra cards. So that to be battle cards. And then you just play for free. You don't even have to play energy or anything. You play for free. Then this one says, uh, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring berry, and switch it to Resmi. So maybe like a blocker that has barrier, you wanna you wanna get rid of it, or you want, or from stopping it from. Uh, Blocking, you just put it to this one. This one's another Ghost Warrior. This one you get something minus 10k. So this one's pretty good too. And it's the same effect. All of these have the same main active main. Uh, you choose, you put 3 back between, between 3 and 7, and you play from your hand. So then there's this one's, this one's good against uh, Baby Vegeta when they summon like the big ones. Like right away because there's like a, uh, if, if they have more energy, um, yeah, if the battle card has, has, is bigger than the energy they have, then you KO it. I mean, oh, this one sends it to the warp actually, so it's even better. The turtles right here, this one's the best one. This kind of like the dimension, I mean, a full shatter and mystery. I mean, try and sh shadows like something like that. Uh, so you play for free. You place this card in the drop area. You choose one battle card and you warp it. So this was really this was the best one from all of them. This one's another Ghost Warrior. Uh, when you play, it, you draw a card. The for the rest of the game, uh, your opponent can if they want to activate like like Sensu Beam. Or send up button or something like that, they will switch energy back to active. They have to put five cards on the drop area and to the warp. So this is good against Janemba. This was your super combo, standard, four less, draw one, free 10k. This is uh you reduce it by two because you're always gonna have that leader, the machine mutant. You burst one, you play this card in your, in your dropper, and you draw one. So this is like the typical play you when you play you draw. But in this case you send it to, to the drop area because you want to have it in the drop area. Especially since it's a 3. To so send it back and play your Ghost Warriors. And then it's just the extra card. You know, your leader gets 10k. And, you, and this one places all 1 drops in the owners. Um, in your opponent's drop area to the opponent's drop area. I mean your opponent's battle area to your opponent's drop area. So this gives rid of all the one drops. This one, you have to be really careful with this one. You you place two cards on the top of your deck in the drop area every turn. At the end of your turn. So that way you could always have something on the drop area to send it back for the Ghost Warriors. Right? Because you always want to send three. You always send three cards. It's kind of like warping, but you send it back to the deck. But you have to be really careful because you can mail yourself out with this card. So those are that. And then this one, the ones that gives gives something revenge and 10k. So you one of your little blockers. That one has nothing to do with. Really, you could use it, but it's not really useful. It's just you can activate if you're 4 less by taking a life. The counterplay is that if you're 4 less, the bio card being played. If, it has to, if it's an energy cost of 3 or less, it's sent to the warp instead of being played. So, I mean, this one it is, it is good against uh, U6, 
it's really good against 3-6. But well, you have to be a 4 or less. So it's kind of like late game. And I don't think it has any other cards, but in my opinion, that's the better doctor. The other one could kill you if you're in like a slow deck. But against aggro decks or something else like that, that's the better doctor than the other one. And let me see, does it have anything else? I don't think it has any other other cards. But you only have black battle cards. So you could you could mix it with, with this. You could mix it with skillless Goku. Bring Vanillas back. Keep attacking with Vanillas or something like that. Um and then just wait it out. But yeah, so the so those, that was my opinion on those on those two archetypes. To me, like I said, to me the black one is, seems a little better. But the green one, I know people want to play it because you know, it's uh, it's kind of like another Janemba. It's another win con, another win condition. And I mean, it's, it doesn't seem that it's gonna be that hard to to achieve because when Janemba came out. People were saying uh, like, oh, it's gonna be too hard to mill someone out you know, from the 50 card deck. But then from the 50 card deck, it becomes like a 40 card deck. So it was pretty easy to mill someone out. Now with this one, I think it's gonna be pretty easy to to um to what's it called to to put 17 cards in the under the lab. I don't think it's gonna be that hard, to be honest. Uh, let me look for that lab. Let me see, can you, can you get rid of the lab or not? Where is the lab at? I don't even think I saw it. Creator. Why is Dr. Eerie? Play. Yeah, where is the lab at? Huh. Is there like an, an SPR or something? Because I actually want to see it. I want to see if it has a... Um, if that lab has uh, something that prevents it from being destroyed. Because we do have a, a Vegeta that destroys fuel, fuel cards. But I don't know if that one has it or not. I wonder where it is. Cause it's not right here. Oh uh, whatever. We'll leave it for next time, but yeah, so that was my opinion. Hope you guys liked it. Uh leave a comment in the bottom, tell me what which which archetype are you most excited for? Are you looking forward to this Dr. Uriel, Dr. Lynch, or maybe you know Android 21? I know a lot of people are hyped for this. Or even baby. So let me know in the comments below which one you're looking forward to and I'll see you guys next time.